What's the difference when graphing a logarithm of x minus 1 and 1 minus x? Now to understand that, we need to know a couple things. The first thing is what the parent graph looks like for the logarithmic function. That's what I have here, y equals log of x. You can see there's an x-intercept at 1 comma 0, and there's a vertical asymptote at x equals 0. Now to understand the one, x minus 1 and the 1 minus x, we need to understand the transformations for a logarithm. Now I don't want to go through all the transformations because we just want to focus on these two. But the important thing that I want you to understand is when we have transformations inside of our function, those are going to be what we call our horizontal transformations. When we're adding or subtracting, that's going to be a horizontal shift. And when we're multiplying, that is going to be a reflection or a stretch and compress. The same thing works on the outside. D is going to be our shift up or down if it's positive or negative, And A is going to be our stretch compress or our reflection. But that's going to be vertical. We're focusing on the inside. So what is going to be the x minus 1? Now, a lot of students will see the negative 1. They think, well, I need to take this graph and shift it one unit to the left. But there's an important thing that I like to tell my students or show them. It's really x minus parentheses c. And you can see that this c is actually going to be a positive. So if I put a parentheses around this x minus c and it's in that formation, x minus 1, you can see actually I'm going to be shift c is equal to 1. So I'm actually going to be shifting the graph one unit to the right. Now it's important when you're graphing a logarithm, not just to transform my x-intercept with my whole graph, but I'm also going to want to transform or shift over my vertical asymptote. Now let's go and take a look at one minus x. Now you can see one minus x is not in this formation of b times x minus c. So what we need to do is put it into that formation. I'm going to rearrange my x and my one, so that's gonna be a negative x plus one, and then I'm going to factor out my negative one. So therefore what I'll have is y equals a log of negative x minus one. So we know the negative one is going to be shifting my graph one unit to the right. But what is this negative that's being multiplied by going to do? Well, that is going to be a reflection about my y-axis. So well, actually what I need to do is take this green graph, I need to reflect it about the y-axis, so it looks something like that, and then I need to shift it one unit to the right. So again, just like I had before, my vertical asymptote is being shifted one unit to the right, but now once I reflect it and then shift it, my graph is going to look something like that.